Hi everyone, uh, this is Debbie. Welcome to The Sane Progressive, the YouTube video series that seeks to inject some sanity into modern American political dialogue. If you have been following my recent coverage, you know that there is a preliminary plan in the works, um, and they're developing committees on this right now, for the Department of Homeland Security to um, be usurping the authority from Congress and the states um, to have jurisdiction over the United States election system. And they would be doing this by invoking the um, critical infrastructure clause. Now, I have created a petition over on whitehouse.gov uh, basically telling them to immediately cease and desist with this plan. And I want to share with you that petition and then go about talking to you about how this uh, plan developed, who has been putting forth uh, the need for this plan, uh, the circumstances on how it arose, and why the American people should be furious that they have any um, gall as to be trying to usurp um, the people's power to oversee our own elections through the Department of Homeland Security. It's truly an outrage. So let us first um, look at the petition I've created. Now, this was a, a originally a much longer petition, but there's only 800 words, so I had to be very succinct. And this is the title, Cease Unconstitutional Effort to Grant Homeland Security Jurisdiction Over Elections Via Critical Infrastructure Clause. Uh, it has been recently reported that the Department of Homeland Security is considering designating U.S. elections critical infrastructure, a move that will give authority for the, de the Department of Homeland Security to seize jurisdiction over U.S. election systems. According to Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1 of the United States Constitution, only individual states have authority to implement and execute U.S. elections, and only Congress has authority to make changes to how this authority is implemented. Now, the exact uh, section from Congress is, quote, the times, places, and manners of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislator thereof, but the Congress may at any time by lawmaker or alter such regulations except as to the places of choosing senators. So we demand that the Department of Homeland Security immediately cease any and all plans to unconstitutionally claim jurisdiction over any aspect of the United States election system and cease formation of preliminary committees to facilitate such transfer. The Department of Homeland Security has no right to circumvent Congress to see the, seize authorities from states. Cease and desist. Okay, so that is the petition. And I will put that in the video description below. Please sign it and please share it. And please share this video because my petitions and when I and I do these, it's more as an educational campaign. <laughs> I really do not think we're going to write a strongly worded letter to the White House and all of a sudden they are going to abandon these, these plans. It's going to take a lot of uh, pressure and education of the American people so they understand why this is even important because most people do not understand that our election system is in crisis. We have an election system that is rigged for fraud. They do not understand the implications of what happened in the Democratic primary in 2016. And so this really needs to be an educational campaign. So if you are new to this issue, one of the things I want to talk about is when they started to say that the Department of Homeland Security needed to be making this, this uh, step. And then we're going to talk about the cybersecurity um, working group that they just developed that has no cybersecurity experts, but only people riddled with um, concerns around election fraud and embroiled in election fraud lawsuits. Okay, so... I, I wanted to bring this back, though, and I've talked about this in um, prior videos. Now, this originally started getting stirrings right after the Democratic uh, National Committee was hacked. Now, this is back on July 28, 2016, when members of the Aspen Institute of Homeland Security Group issued a statement on the DNC hack, and it was put forth in their statement that um, part of it was, 
Elections at every level of government should take the lesson to heart. Our electoral process could be a target for reckless foreign governments and terrorist groups. The voting process is critical to our democracy and must be proof against such attacks or the threat of such attacks. Voting processes and results must receive security akin to what we expect for critical infrastructure. So here is where it began. Where did it begin? It began in a document uh, signed by um, Michael Shertoff, former Secretary of Homeland Security, Michael Hayden, former Director, National Security, Central Intelligence Agency, David Heyman, former Assistant Secretary for Policy, Department of Homeland Security. And it began with them uh, making claims unsubstantiated that with this, we cannot ignore news reports that the IT server of the Democratic National Committee have been hacked, with some experts attributing the hacks to hackers affiliated with, Russian gov with the Russian government. Other reports claim that the documents stolen in these hacks have been released publicly at the instigation of the Russian government, and there is widespread speculation that the release may be in an effort to influence the outcome of the United States presidential election. Now, I have done video after video after video after video video uh, trying to explain to everyone that now this is not a substantiated charge these are allegations and this 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 was um, at the same time that these uh, top CIS um, NSA and CIA and Homeland Security officials are making this inflammatory statement um, and having this meeting James Clapper the director of national intelligence says they didn't know, did not know the origin of the hacks, that everyone was hyperventilating, and they and that they did not have the proof that Russia was was anybody uh, who had leaked or was behind the hacks. That was the direct d director of uh, national intelligence of our government saying that that we did not have the proof yet. Here they are making these mass claims and, and talking about how we need to make policy and putting forth the critical infrastructure so that the Department of Homeland Security can seize control of our elections. So this all stemmed off the DNC leaks uh, saying there's cybersecurity threats from foreign nations that aren't even proven. And at the same time, and I've talked about this repeatedly, when Julian Assange talked about alleged sources with WikiLeaks, he referred to somebody inside, Seth Rich, who was the voter database manager for the DNC as an alleged Wiki WikiLeaks source. And uh, this person was murdered at four in the morning and WikiLeaks has offered a $20,000 reward for information uh, re leading to the capture and prosecution of the murderer of Seth Rich. So they're making this up, okay? And, and then they want to develop cybersecurity um, committees to talk about, uh, to oversee uh, you know, the United States elections. So that's what I want to get into to talking to next. They have created, this is from August 31st, NASS, uh, National Association of Secretary of States, appoints Secretaries of State to Federal Election Infrastructure Cybersecurity Working Group. There it is again, infrastructure. This is how they're seizing control. This is, this, this group, they have no authority to be making a group about cybersecurity on our election system. This is not, this is not their um, jurisdiction. They haven't even unconstitutionally claimed the power to take the jurisdiction. And here they are creating working groups around it. Um, and there is a, an interesting article that I will put in the video description below. The Department of Homeland Security's new election cybersecurity cyber committee has no cybersecurity experts on it. Okay, so who do they put on it? Well, let's look at who has been appointed because it's really chilling. They have 
Brian Kemp of Georgia, who has had three election fraud lawsuits brought against him in the past year, and Alex Padilla of California, who has been sued twice with issues with election fraud, is currently embroiled in scandal because of the serious questions around California and the Democratic primary election. We just had trust vote results come out who did independent exit polling showing Bernie Sanders winning in these exit polls where Hillary Clinton took the, the victories. Um, you know, uh, there. so let's just take this one at a time and we'll get more into each of these individuals. So Brian Kemp. Um, now, it's really puzzling to me why the Department of Homeland Security would want to put a Secretary of State in charge of um, a cybersecurity um, policy group when last November, quote, Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp acknowledged Wednesday that his office last month illegally disclosed the social security numbers and other private information of more than six million registered voters. Kemp's office sent what it called personal identifying information to 12 organizations, including state political parties, news media organizations, and Georgia gun owner magazine. Why on earth would you want somebody whose office had been responsible for one of the largest voter data breaches in history to be chairing a cybersecurity group? <laughs> a person who has no cybersecurity or technical or encryption experience. It totally calls into question what the working group is actually for. If this is the kind of person and Brian Kemp has had three lawsuits brought against him in the past year. Let's look at the lawsuits of this person. Let me pull this up here. Okay, back in February, February, there was a federal lawsuit accusing Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp of illegally bumping Georgia voters off the state voter rolls ahead of the 2016 presidential election. And then we had... In July, the nonpartisan voting rights group Project Vote filed a lawsuit against Georgia's Secretary of State Brian Kemp over his re refusal to release public records relating to rejected voter registration applications. And then just a few days ago, this one's just from a few days ago, quote, Georgia's strict system for adding new voters to the rolls risks disenfranchising tens of thousands of minorities in the battleground state this fall, according to a new lawsuit by several voting rights groups. Since 2013, Georgia has failed to process more than 42,000 voter registration applications because of this personal information provided didn't match existing information in state-maintained databases, lawyers for the group said. Over 86% of those whose applications weren't processed were non-white, even though whites make up about nearly half of those who have sought to register during that period. Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp, the state's top official, is named as a defendant in the lawsuit. And this is the person that the Department of Homeland Security wants to put in charge of election security, the cybersecurity working group, an unconstitutional uh, committee that should not even exist and has no authority to be making policy over our election system anyways. It's unconstitutional. There you have it. Now, Alex Padilla, there is four people who've put on him, but the two most troubling that I found, and I'm still going to be doing research on all of them, but what stood out immediately to me was Alex Padilla. Um, he twice sued uh, for um, election fraud, including for the Democratic primary election. Huge questions about how the provisional ballots and the vote-in ballots were handled. Um, many voters being disenfranchised because of um, being uh, said to have been signed up for a mail-in ballot. These voters never participated in a mail-in ballot. Uh, they were given provisional ballots uh, that uh, did not include um, uh, a choice to vote for the presidency. There has been, uh, if you watch, I'll give you the um, link in the video description below. You should watch Uncounted. Um, which will give you a general overview of what happened in the uh, in the California election, and you can also um, 
refer to the election fraud blog and go to the California section, um, electionfraud2016.wordpress.com, and you will see th- this 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 uh, Democratic primary riddled riddled with uh, uh, questions of fraud, of of ballot shredding. Uh, there's an audit that 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 Ray Lutz is trying to get. Um, uh, to go through. He's got a court case coming up in October. Alex Padilla is trying to fight and say that there shouldn't be a full audit, including all of the ballots, uh, to have an accurate uh, accounting of the vote. Oh, yeah, that's who you want as somebody who's going to be doing election security, somebody who wants to make sure that that uh, audits are not done uh, as to the prescribed uh, uh, remedies of the law. It is absolutely, absolutely obscene that two of the people appointed to the cybersecurity group are are, uh, riddled uh, with allegations of election fraud. And so, again, that 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 uh, begs the question, why would you want them on a committee? Why would that why would you be why would the Department of Homeland Security be forming a committee? That for cybersecurity that has no cybersecurity experts on it, but does have people riddled and embroiled with lawsuits of election fraud. Um, this this immediately needs to cease. There is no reason whatsoever that the Department of Homeland Security should be seeking to interfere with our elections. Their history is one that is just going to make people even um, more. Um, distrustful of the system we have, given the fact that, you know, this was the organization that brought us the illegal NSA spying program that was unconstitutionally and spying on the American citizenry. This is not a um, agency that the American people have any faith in or trust, and, and nor is it an agency that has any power within the Constitution to be, be, be playing this role. So, this really boils down to not about making our elections more secure. They're, they're not trying to create, create more security for the, the United States um, election system and ensure verifiable, transparent elections. They are trying to seize control over our elections. And the fact that this stemmed in response to unsubstantiated allegations from Democrats who are stating that Russia has hacked the United States election system and plans uh, to try to tamper with our election system in the fall, allegations that are unsubstantiated, not proven, that should raise serious, serious, serious alarm bells. Because what that tells me as this is not about um, uh, creating secure elections. It's about cover-up. It's, um, it's about being able to maintain the fraud and not stop the fraud. Because the problems with the United States election system aren't with Russia. We have, we have machines that should not even be illegally allowed to be used. They can be electronically hacked without leaving a trace of evidence. We have um, mass evidence of voter roll purging all over the United States that targeted Bernie Sanders voters specifically to be disenfranchised um, from participating in the Democratic primary elections in Arizona, in California, in uh, New York, in California. And what really, really speaks is that none of the uh, talk from the Department of Homeland Security or the Democrats talks about any of the proven, the proven fraud that we saw occur in this election. No mention of the fact that the um, exit polls did not match the official results in 11 states that did uh, exit polls, 11 of the 26, outside of the margin of error, often in double digits. Huge, huge red flags for election fraud. We have two individuals, election chief board officials in New York that had to step down from their position because they needed to be investigated for a a, a voter roll purging and election tampering. We have that. Have you heard any discussion about 
uh, the, the mass problems that occurred. We have videotaped F evidence of caucus rigging with the Hillary Clinton campaign in Nevada, in Iowa. Is there any talk about those, about the actual evidence? Is there any talk about the fraud that occurred with the Democratic National Committee itself, whose top individuals were proven to be trying to sabotage Bernie Sanders' campaign? Uh, to to uh, skew the election for Hillary Clinton. None of that is taken seriously. None of the internal uh, rigging and and um, red flags for fraud and 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 caucus rigging and absentee ballot stuffing are even talked about. None of the concerns about the voting machines and Bev Harris talking about fractionalizing the vote is even discussed. The only thing that's discussed is Russia might get us, and so we need to seize unconstitutional authority over the voting machines so that we can usurp the power of the state and the Congress. This is chilling. This is chilling. The Department of Homeland Security should be nowhere near our election system. And the individuals who are advocating this... Michael Sheratoff, Michael Hayden, people who were involved in unconstitutional programs of spying on the American citizenry. Why the hell would you want them to be influencing policy on our election system? This is obscene. It is outrageous. And I highly encourage you to watch all my videos to really explain this in much more depth and to sign the petition over at whitehouse.gov and to alert the American people and, and, and your fellow citizens to what is going on. Because this is, um, this is a, a, a move that will um, seriously, seriously affect any ability for us to have uh, meaningful, um, true elections in the future. All right, as always, this is Debbie, the Sane Progressive. You guys stay sane. Peace out.